God. That's a beautiful thing to hear. 5,000 people singing that out together, declaring it together. Thank you, God. You know, when I was backstage during Brandon said, I got a text from my mom. Who, uh, you know, she's always following where I go, uh, different cities, and she's like, uh, "Hey, they used to be in these um, in these bands back in the 1970s, where uh, this Jesus people, Jesus Revolution thing happened in Southern California, and it kind of spilled its way over into the country, and even over here to Hawaii. A little bit, bunch of hippies being saved, and my parents were two of those hippies. They don't they don't say they're hippies, but I saw the pictures. They definitely look like hippies." And uh, and they're like, hey, when we, me and your dad were in a band called Parable, it's a band I've heard a lot about growing up. It's this band that they were in together before they were like even married. You know, my mom was one of the singers. My dad was a guitar player. And she's like, in 1979, we had an evangelistic service at the Waikiki Shell that you're playing at tonight. I was like, are you kidding me? In, seven, in 1978 or 79, that's like six years before I was born. My parents were rocking out for Jesus at this place and it's a cool full circle a generation later we're doing the same thing preaching the same gospel because it never changes it never changes a new generation their belief and their faith passed on to me not because of what they did on stage because of how they walked in their life you know um and it's amazing thinking of how many people in this place right now walking in jesus all the ripple effect of each one of your lives in your families, in your friendship groups, in your schools, in your workplaces, just you being you, walking in the spirit, walking in love, you know, the ripple effects of belief in the one who is greater, how that's changing people's lives. I'm so glad that when we say we believe in Jesus, we're not adhering to some man-made philosophy. We're not talking about some statue carved by man, living, standing in a temple that stands for hope and truth, but really doesn't represent anything living. We sing to the living God, y'all. Because he lives. Because he lives. I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. All fear is gone. Because I know. day that should have been the darkest day in all of history when man killed the one who created them when creation killed the one who loves them their creator we didn't understand him so we killed him it should be the darkest day in history but we call that good friday how is that possible because sunday came y'all we know friday was good because we see the fruition of the promise on sunday we didn't understand but he came and that's what he's still doing today. He's taking the mess of our Fridays, all the Fridays we created in our own lives, our own selfishness and sin and grossness and mess. And he's stepping into that stuff and he's turning our Fridays into Sundays every time, you know. It's not always his plan. Some of us are walking in a Saturday right now. We're waiting for the promise, but we don't see it yet. And I'm saying be patient right now because in Jesus, Sunday always comes. In Jesus, there's always eventually resurrection, redemption, renewal, healing, fullness, peace, glory, joy. In Jesus, Friday is good. Friday can be good because Sunday is always coming. Amen?
when all heaven sings to him alone. We watch and wait like a bride for a groom. No church arrived, cause Jesus.